Okay, everybody, we're going to get started. We're going to do a tic-tac-toe game. We are doing a tic-tac-toe game that plays with a computer. So it's a one-player game. You play against the computer. Now, your assignment number two is for a two-player game. There's two versions of this tic-tac-toe game. There's the one I'm going to show you now, and then there's a one, there's a version of it that's in bhacker.com that is a two-player. So you have to do the tutorial twice if you want that one. Or you could swap this one and turn it into a two-player. I'm going to show you what, what it looks like in a few minutes. A couple of different ways of designing tic-tac-toe. I'm sure that you're all familiar with the game. There's a grid, usually three by three. And you put an X and you put an O and you get three X's together, three O's together, and the person wins. So I have two versions of the game. One of them uses buttons. The other one uses image views. So it shows you a couple different variations. And one of them has a two-player logic. The other one has a single-player logic. I want to show you the single-player logic today because that one's the newer version of it. The older version of it is the two-player. So if you can't figure it out on your own, you're supposed to make a two-player game. can't figure it out, go to bhacker.com. There's a different tutorial there that you can play around with. But what we're going to do is we're going to determine the requirements and the components. This is what you're going to do for a two-player game. You can turn in the one that you do as long as you turn it in as a two-player, not a one-player. I didn't want to do a two-player for you in class. I'm doing a one-player for you in class. You have to turn it into a two-player. That means two people click. It goes X to O, X to O. It's very easy to do it. So it doesn't really matter. You just have to know how to change the logic. And I'll show you the logic so you'll figure it out. And I'll tell you what to do when we get there. So it's going to use a window. And we're going to create a suitable display, a 3x3 three three of buttons or images. Uh, we're going to use buttons on the tutorial that I'm going to show you today. So in which the user uh, chooses uh, which letter to go, X or an O. Uh, as each user clicks on the button, the text should show uh, X or 0 on the buttons. Or you can use images. We're going to show you with images. So you can do exactly what we're doing in this demonstration using images. You don't have to use text. And you don't have to use buttons. And the display should show a game statistic, such as how many moves have been made and whose turn it is. I'm not going to do that part for you. You've got to do it yourself. So you've got to show how many moves and whose turn it is. It's going to be pretty easy. If you can do Hello World, you can copy this stuff to a label. The information is in the game. And I'll show you some hints when we get to the end of the game. So I'll show you how to do it. Create a function to check if there's a winner. I'm going to give that to you. And display the winner when uh, when there is one. A little pop-up window is going to say who won. And uh, allow the users to play again, and then retain the, the data of wins and loses and draws. Well, that's just for not retain. I don't mean put it in a database. I mean while the program's running, keep track of how many people won, how many people lost, or when it was a tie. This program doesn't actually keep track of ties. So you might want to modify it to do that. Let me show you the finished results so you know what it looks like. And then we'll, we'll see what it, um, then we'll build it from scratch. Because I want to show you the, the, the end product because sometimes it's able, you're able to see it a little bit clearer. So the end product looks like this. It's a stupid computer. Uh, the computer doesn't, um, computer doesn't think. It just randomly selects a spot. So I start out first, I'm the user, and I'm going to select, I'm going to go in the middle here, actually, and I'm going to be an X. So when I put the X in here, you see the O showed up over here. So as soon as I go, the computer goes next. But the computer's pretty stupid. It just randomly selects a spot. So, I mean, I serve, well, you know, actually, that's a, that's a toss-up. I probably would put it right here. But now I'm going to win. So it says, you won, great job, you beat the computer. Uh, computer, well, that's supposed to be an exclamation point. I put a one there, uh, typo. But then the game doesn't stop, it just keeps going. <laughs> so it's kind of easy, it's, it's meant to be a kind of a level one tutorial. Fairly easy. Uh, so let's build this thing, that's why we're taking this class, so you can learn how to build it. Uh, so let's see. You're going to need the six files that we downloaded. Four of them are for this program. You have two image files. So if you decompress the image files, um, you'll see a couple things. You'll see a PDF file. This is the wrong P. This is the other one. This is the two-player game that uses image views. It uses the same images, but it uses them all in image views instead of buttons. We're going to use buttons. 
Um, so I'll leave that one here. And you'll see there's two different image files. One of them has a set of images that look like that, and another one has a set of images. Oops, they're both the same. All right. Well, I may have given you two of the same. Doesn't really matter. Are there a different? There should there should have been two. Oh, here the. I'm sorry. I just I double clicked the wrong ones. There are two. There's a blue set and there's a there's a blue set and there's a red set. You can also download images from all over the place or create your own images if you want. You can use these images. I like the red set, so I'm going to use the red set. So you want to have the images as well when you do this tutorial. So let me start in. Uh, so let's see. We're going to create a new single view application. And uh, we're going to drag all of the background images to the project folder. So first thing we're going to do is just create the blank folder, excuse me, the blank project. So open up Xcode create a new Xcode project and this is a single view application and click on next and then let me call this one Tiki Tacky Toe Tiki Tiki Tacky Toe because I already have a Tic Tac Toe we got Tiki Tacky Toe and I'm gonna go next and uh, I'm gonna save it to my desktop so now we got a ticky tacky toe game going on here. Once you create the project, the first thing you're going to want to do is drag the images over, stick them in the project. Which one do you want to drag over? Your choice. You don't need this thing that says thumbs db on it. It's just a temp file. You need the one that says o.png, tic tac toe.png, and x.png. Don't rename the files, just leave the files as is. Take the file, drag it over to the folder, let go. Make sure you've got up here where it says copy items into destination groups folder if needed. Make sure you have that one selected. If you do, they'll copy in. Otherwise, they'll be linked. If they get linked and you delete them off your desktop, which is what you're probably going to do later on, you'll lose them. You'll be throwing them away. So go ahead and press on finished. So now you see I have an O over here. Do the same thing with the X. And do the same thing with the background. So if you don't like this background, you can pick another background if you want. So, but we have a background image. So. Did we get our images copied in? Okay, good. Holler if you want me to slow down or stop. Okay. Or, you know, you need time to catch up. I'm going to assume that you've copied the images in. So, and when you copy them in, you get this. You get the, them copied in into the file directory. Now we're going to click on the main storyboard. We're going to drag an image view to the window. That's going to hold the background image. Change the property to show the background image you're using. So let's click on main.storyboard. And uh, I'm going to change my background because everything I do is green. I'll mix this up a little bit. Oh, there you go. That's a lovely green color. Now go down to the library on the right hand side, type in image view, drag an image view over. If you fill up the entire window, your whole game is going to be, your whole window is going to be a tic-tac-toe game. I don't, I don't like doing that. I'm just going to put it in a smaller window. And now I'm going to put it on the top. The reason why I'm going to do this is because we're going to make a slight addition to this. I want to show you how to update the labels. Because if I do it this way, I can put the stats down here. Like player one went, player two went, stuff like that. So when we get all done with the game, I'll tell you how to modify it. I'll give you some hints on how to modify it for your assignment. So once you put the image view, and what you're looking for is called image view. Stick an image view on top of your other view. Click over here to the right hand side and on the top of the screen where it says image view, image views hold images. Open it up and select the background image that you want to use. I have this one here, the little Japanese looking image view, <laughs> or whatever that is. We all got our background set? Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, so now we're going to go on the next step. We're going to add six buttons and place them in the squares on the top of the background image. Now your UI is going to look like this. I left the button labels on there so you could see the UI. So we need six buttons. 
So we could come down here and type in button. Drag a button over. Now I'm going to take a shortcut method here. I'm going to size the button to fill up the square because when the user clicks on the button the image is going to change to the new image, right? So if, if you have the button right here and you click right here, the button's not going to click. <laughs> so fill up the square with the button. So see how the square is getting bigger? And the square, my square is going to be 85 by 87. Now, let's go 88 by 88. I got a pretty big button. So now I'm going to, now that I know how big the button is, I'm going to copy the button. And I'm going to paste it five more times under the UI. See, I got a button here. I'm going to stick the button here. And I'm going to line up the word button. Because if I leave the label on here, I can always pull the label off, and I'm going to pull the label off soon. I can see how the button is aligned in the, on, the, on the grid. So I got a button here. And a button here. Here's a button. Got a button here. A button here. Oh, one button there. See how my buttons are lined up? They're all the same size. They're all filling up the grids. When you're happy with your buttons, clap your hands. No, when you're happy with your buttons, remove the labels. <laughs> but let me give you a few minutes. So let me pause this for a second. Okay, don't take your buttons. Don't take your button labels off yet. This is the easiest way to show the alignment. If you take your buttons and minutes off, they go empty. You can't see them. We still have to wire them. And when people wire them, they accidentally move them all over the place, and then you can see it. So it's a little design hint, actually. If you're going to have buttons like that, leave the labels on. Always pull the labels off last. So. OK, so let's see what we got going on here. <sighs> Eventually, we're going to want to get rid of the button labels on the buttons. Oh, we're going to do attendance. Actually, this is probably good timing. All right, so at this point, you got your buttons, and now uh, we're going to ready to continue. So we're going to change the tag property on all the buttons to be 1 through 9. And then look in the view, view section of the property window under mode to find this. So this is the screen we're looking for. If we tag the buttons, we can treat all the buttons the same, and each one of them is going to have a different identification to it. So click on the first button over here in the left-hand corner. Go over to the screen that's on the right-hand corner over here. Go all the way down to the bottom. Underneath View, there's a thing called Tag. You see it's on zero? Change it to one. And then click on the one next to it and change it to two. And then the one next to it, change it to three. <laughs> and then we have four and five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, and lo and behold, number nine. So change your tags one through nine. Do we need more time? Yeah. Okay. All right, now that we're all tagged up, we are ready to roll for step number six. We're going to wire them. All of your buttons get wired to the same method, just like the calculator we did the other day. So we're going to wire the first button first. Make sure you're wiring it to viewcontroller.h, and then we're putting it in between the interface and the end. Call this one square press. So name the IB action square press. So let's see. Let me, let me demonstrate. I'm clicking on the tuxedo icon. Let me get rid of my side piece. Switching over to viewcontroller.h. 
going to make uh, some room here to make this a little easier to see. All right, mouse click on the button. And I'm going to pick the touchdown event. Put it here. And what am I going to call it? Let's just refresh my memory here. Square press. Here, let's just copy it. Square press. If you misspell it, just leave it alone. We'll fix it later. We'll fix it over the. We'll just. You'll just not use the same name. You'll use a different name. UI button. Press connect. Once you have the first one, and I just did the touchdown events. Then close the little black window, go to the second button, click on the second button, right mouse click, drag the touchdown event over like this, and connect it to the same method. Let go, you'll see it connected. Do this to all the buttons. So connect all your buttons to that same method. This is the this is tedious, but this is how you get them all working together. Make sure you're doing the touch down event or one of the touch events. Don't do touch cancel, which is right above it. it doesn't really matter which event you use, actually. When you're all done, hover your mouse over the plus and make sure they're all highlighted like that. When you're all done, hover your mouse over the the little uh, gray ball thing, button thing, circle, <laughs> and make sure that they're all connected. They should look something like that. Actually, I just noticed this one could be moved over a little bit. You can actually check your alignment buttons at this point, too. They look pretty good. Or mine look pretty good, I should say. And this one could move over just a little bit. Now, if you're happy, with your buttons, clap your hands. No, <laughs> um, remove the labels. So if you're happy with your buttons, remove the labels. So how are you going to do that? You can do it one of two ways. If you don't want to mess up the interface, you could click on the button and then in the right hand plane, plane over here, just get rid of the text. That way you don't risk messing up the interface if you like your alignment of your buttons. Or you could just double click on the button and work right from the button. I don't want to touch my buttons anymore, I'm just going to leave it alone. So I'm getting rid of all of the labels now. So now my buttons sort of look invisible. So we finished the method looks like this, square press, and all eight buttons, or nine buttons total, are connected to it. And important note, make sure we are doing this with the viewcontroller.h file. So now we're going to write the source code. We only have one button to write, so it's not that much source code. Uh, so first we're going to test the buttons. So we're going to add the following code and then we're going to run the project just to see what happens. You're going to test your buttons out right now. Why? Because if you get the tags wrong, your entire game logic is wrong. So you can put cut and paste this code and stick it inside of the button uh, in viewcontroller.m. But let me just walk you through how to do it. Uh, we're going to add... Uh, <coughs> We're going to add the following code and run the project. Look at the lower console window and the button tag numbers. 
should show as you click the buttons. And I probably should change that instruction. So I say to put it in viewcontroller.m. But change it over to viewcontroller.m. Go down to the square pressed method. Paste the code in. And what's the code doing? Well, the code's going to show you, because this, this is a little bit of exercise in uh, testing as well. The code's going to create an NS integer i that's going to be sender tag. So sender is the button that got to this method, the one you clicked on, and a tag is those zero, excuse me, one through nine that you made up there. And then the NS log is going to show test and then the number, test tag one, two, three, four. So you could change the text if you wanted to do and go like test tag and then go here one, two, three. You want to be more explicit. If you run the project, here's what happens. So bring it up and I'll show you how the NS log works actually. So if I press here, it says two on the bottom of my screen. I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger so you can kind of see what it looks like. Go back to my project. It's running. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All my buttons are tagged <laughs> together. All the button clicks are being picked up. Everything's good. You don't test the logic now. What ends up happening is you add all the code and then it doesn't work. At least you know this part works. Because half the time you get the wrong button labeled something. So this is a good test at this point. Um, to make sure that your buttons are working correctly. So after you've tested out your code, we're, it, now we're going to move on. So we're going to fix any problems. Otherwise, your game functionality isn't going to work right. So we're going to fix problems. So now we're going to add a counter. So we're going to put a variable because we want to keep count of the turns. So we're going to put it in viewcontroller.h. We're going to cop copy and paste in it turns. And uh, this is going to keep track of how many turns we've had. Uh, remembers uh, which one was picked. So in the uh, viewcontroller.h file, so I'm going to switch back now to the viewcontroller.h file. And right below where it says at interface, I'm going to put an opening and closing bracket and an integer turns. Now, if you're a C programmer, you don't like this, or if you're a Java programmer, you don't like this because you think the entire class goes inside of the opening and the closing brackets, when in fact it doesn't. In Objective-C, well it does in those languages, in Objective-C only the data members go inside the opening and closing brackets. So this is your Objective-C lesson for today. Data members go inside of opening and closing brackets. And we just created an integer turns. So in our next step, we're going to initialize turns to zero when the game starts at the beginning. So this goes into viewcontroller.h. Now we're going to set the number of turns to zero in the viewDidLoad method. So in the viewDidLoad method here, we're going to add this code here that says turns is equal to zero. So let's go back to the project. And now I'm going to click on viewcontroller.m. And then right above where it says super view did load, it's the first method that shows up. I'm going to say turns is equal to zero. So view, view uh, did load is sort of like main. And so if we do that, we're going to initialize the turns to zero. All right, so now we're going to play tic-tac-toe by changing the images when the user clicks on a button. So the user goes first is the X, and that computer will be L. And then we'll automatically go next after we go. We just saw the functionality earlier. So we're going to copy the following button code into the square press method and make sure the button images are named appropriately. What does that mean? Well, make sure you've got an x.png and an o.png further down here. <coughs> o.png. And let's take a look at the code a little bit. Uh, this is not an Objective-C programming class, but I sort of want to go through the code just to let you know what it's doing, because some of you have taken the Objective-C class, and you can take this a little bit further. This is the test step. We could just leave it in if you want, or you could pull it out. It doesn't really matter. So the button that was clicked. So first of all, we're going to make a UI button called temp button. 
So 10th button is an instance of UI button. And it's going to be self.view.view with tag I. So it's a button with a tag. This is just the initialization of a generical button that we're going to use as a temporary, which one did we click? And we, got, we clicked it from self.view, view with tag I. Now, I is going to be the placeholder for the tag we're going to get. So 10th button, which is the button we just clicked on from the view. So we made a button from the self.view. 10th button, set image. We're running a method called set image, and it's going to be a UI image. Image name is going to be x.png. So this is the same syntax that we used the other day for hello world with the at directive, but instead of saying at directive, well this is a text actually. We're going to say image name, well we have an image, this is where I said make, don't make sh if you change your images, the names of your images in your project, then change it here, or change the images to match x and o if you have that. And this is the rest of the method for state UI control state normal, which means leave the control state normal, don't change the control, just change the image to the image x, because we're going to start out with x. And then temp button, set the tag to i plus 10. We're doing this so that 1 turns into 10, 2 turns into 20, 3 turns into 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Why? Because we're going to have the computer randomly select a number between 0 and 9 and if, check to see if the button exists. And if the button doesn't exist, uh, if 1 is already taken, if I clicked on number 1 and I took number 1, 1's not 1 anymore, it's turned into 10. So it's going to go, oh, 1's not found. So we're, cha we're playing with the tags to say that the button has been selected already. So it just multiplies it by 10. It's kind of um, easy logic. And then we're incrementing the turn, so turn plus plus. So our variable that we set to zero is now incremented. Then we're going to check for a winner. Okay, so in the code that you can write for your project, you can do the same thing. Or you can write another method and put this code into the method and just call the method. But I figured it was so easier just to put it in one method for this example. If, let's check for a winner. If self check for winner. Well, let's check for winner. Check for win is going to be a Boolean, true or false. So what we're going to do here then is uh, say that the UI alert view, if there's a winner, we haven't, we actually haven't checked for the winner yet, but if there's a winner, and we have a check for winner down here actually. Check for winner. Actually, I did, I put the check inside of the button press, but there's another method out there that checks for winner. What I was saying is you can have multiple methods if you want to, but this is not that much of a repetitive check. But it is kind of lengthy. I could have just did a method call. But check for uh, check for winners down here. Check for winners kind of crude. So check for win is going to return true or false, depending upon because it's a boolean variable. It's going to depending upon if a winner is found. So it's just a crude check to go through for button 1, button 2, button 3, button 4, all the way up to button 9. And what we're going to do is return true or false if the button has tag 11 on it. And it has number 11 on it again, or has number 11, or, excuse me. So to check for horizontal checks, if button 1.current image equals button 2.current image and button 2 current image equals button 3 current image and button 1 current image isn't null because we could have a winner automatically if all three of the images are null 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 <coughs> but in this case we want to make sure that we have horizontally if we have an x and x and an x x wins an o and o and an o o wins so after we've made and these button ones this is what I'm trying to tell you these button 1 button 2 button 3 are all of the buttons so if we started out with uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, because I added 10 to it, uh, 10 plus 1 is 11. I got the numbering wrong, actually. So 1 didn't turn into 10. It was 10 plus 1 is 11. <laughs> so I can't add today. 10 plus 2 is 12. <laughs> I did my numbering wrong earlier. 10 plus 3 is 13. So if these are the numbers, it's not going to check 1 through 9, because those are not selected yet. 
So our buttons change after they get selected. The tags change by increments of plus 10. So I guess nobody even caught me on that. I was multiplying 10 instead of adding 10. <laughs> nobody said anything. They're like, okay, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, what? <laughs> All right, so addition adds it. So, okay, so button 1 is really a button with the tag number 11. Button 2 is the one with button 12. Button 3 is 13. I couldn't make this any simpler. I was trying to do it, go for simplicity here. So the horizontal goes across. The vertical goes the opposite direction. So the numbers change. So button one dot current image is equal to button four because you know one and four, and then we have uh, seven. One four seven. Just think of a number pad on a telephone. One four seven. Then we got two five something else. And here we got two five eight. And then three six nine, <laughs> the buttons that hold up vertically, and then we check diagonally too. <laughs> so diagonal checks, and so this is what I was saying. This is kind of a, this is yeah, this is kind of a lot of code, but uh, and there's probably easier ways of doing it, but logically this makes a little bit. Uh, I mean, for beginners, this, you don't have to know very much about programming to understand this logic. Okay, <coughs> so let me go back up. This is the check to see if somebody won. So let's see what happens then. We uh, we go first. We're the player. We're the we're the user. We're going to click on a button. We're going to increment our counter so our turns go up. Now, if this is the method we just looked at, if there's a winner, that would be true. Then send up an alert. So we're going to make a new instance of this thing called a UI alert view, and it's called alert. And uh, and we're going to initialize it with U1. Great job. You beat the computer. Oh, I was going to change that, but when I cut it and paste it in, I'll correct my typo. And then we have a cancel button that says OK. And then alert show. Show the alert box. And then now the turns is equal to 10. And we're going to, why did I make the turns 10? Because we only have nine turns. <laughs> 10 means we're done. So then I can check, well, okay, check to see if we're done. If turns is less than nine, let the computer play next. Because we already did one, so turn is at one right now. If we won, we didn't win. That didn't get changed, so, because we only have one, and the rest of them are null, so it's not going to work. So randomly select another button for the computer's turn. So this is why I say the computer's kind of stupid. So integer r is going to be equal to arc four random, and then we use this symbol here, nine, to go zero through nine. Very similar to the way that you would do it um, to see a random number in um, like another language like Java. Actually, it's very Java-like. We're using a built-in method call, and uh, we're ending up selecting a number between zero and nine, and we're going to add it to R for random, and then we're going to pick the button with that tag R. So we're going to have a <coughs> computer button, this is the computer's choice. Ours was temp. This is comp button. It's going to be the same thing, but we're going to get it now. Get the square with R. So now we're going to use R instead of the one we picked. And then, because it's 0 through 9. So see if the square is selectable. If not, select another square. Because <coughs> what, if, what if we picked 1, and we, we changed 1 now to 11. The computer picked 1. So it's going to pick our, our button. But there's no more 1 because we changed 1 to 11. There's no more tag 1. So while comp button super view view with tag R not, which means while it doesn't exist, pick another one. Because what we want to do is find one where it does exist. So if it is a kind of button button class, which means if it's while we have, a, we have an object in the super view, it's a button, and it has this number on it as our tag. Then, while we don't, ha while it's not there, continue and pick another one. So we're going to do the same thing over again. So R is now going to be equal to another button, and then select that button, and then NSR, NS log. We're going to see how many times it has to randomly pick. I just put this out here so we could see <coughs> how many times is it going to randomly pick another number <laughs> for us, um, and then. After it's picked the number, it found one because this was the loop, this is the while loop we created for the button to pick a number to pick one. 
Now we're going to set the image of the button that was picked by the, compu by the computer. So comp button set image, image name at o.png. This is going to be the, for the state UI control state normal. And then now we're going to set the computer button to R plus 10. Because R is going to be the button it selected. If it's selected 2, now it's going to be 10, 12. <laughs> if I can do my math correctly, it's going to be 10 plus 2 for 12. <laughs> you, can, you know, if you wanted to, you could change it to the times 10. It's just anything other than what it is. And then turns plus plus because the users went. Because so, the computer went. So the user went, that's one turn. Computer goes, that's two turns. So it increments by one and one. So let's see if the winner, let's see if there's a winner. So if self check for win. So because the computer could win, we could let the computer win. So we're going to have a check for the win. It's the same code as before, except for now it says you got beat by the computer, try again. And uh, it's going to still set the turns to 10 because the computer won. So now it's not going to go and try and play again. This computer already won. Um, it's kind of buggy. You can actually stick, it's not buggy, but there's some missing functionality. You can make the game board reset if you wanted to. So here's some suggestions for improvement on this. You could pull out the code, the checks for a win, and put in another method. Makes it a little bit easier. Less, less bulk here. You probably could change this check for win logic around, make it a little bit, you know, less rudimentary. Eh, although this does work. Um, I have not checked for a tie. You can actually put code in here to check for a tie on the game. You don't have to do any of this, by the way, but if you want to challenge yourself to learn a little bit more, to do more, these are some of the suggestions I'm telling you about. Um, or you could uh, have the game board reset, as I was mentioning before, have the game reset. And then you can print out underneath, and once we run this thing, I'll show you how to do it real easily. You can update labels with the scores and stuff. You can keep track of who, who, who keeps winning. Uh, but you'll have to put a reset in in order to do that. But let me uh, cut and paste the code. So we have to add um, the code here for square press. So I'm going to copy the code here and uh, fill in that method for the button press. And then we're going to add another method to the bottom. So I'm just going to take everything. I'm going to go into viewcontroller.m down to the bottom here where I was before and I'm just going to paste the code in here and uh, fix the formatting. Now you're going to get a message here that says if check for when, yeah because we don't have that method yet so don't worry about the method yet um, I've got some word wrapping issues going on here too, it looks like, so fix this one here. I'm going to change this here and fix my exclamation point. Great. So let's just leave this one alone. So alert.show. I'm actually going to leave these messages alone for a minute and uh, fix the, put the method that's missing in as soon as I clean up the code a little bit. Like I've got an extra bracket at the end too. All right, now I'm going to add the code in for the missing method here. Let's see what kind of messages I have left. If cutting and pasting from this PDF file doesn't work well for you, you can always cut and paste it from the finished solution as well. And I might actually have to do that in a few minutes. No. Oh, it looks like that pasted okay. So let's go back up and see what's going on up here. Appears to be some line returns at the end of the line. <coughs> oh, let's see. All right, so I'm going to make my life easy. I'm actually going to pull this out of here and put it in from the. I'm going to paste it in from the sample from the solution file instead. So 
Let me show you how to do this, actually. So I downloaded, I, I called mine Tiki Tacky Toe, if you remember at the beginning. I downloaded the solution file. It was called Tic Tac Toe. And uh, what did I do with it? It's probably over here. If I open up the file on my folder, uh, excuse me, on my desktop, and I just go into it, this is viewcontroller.h. So I can actually double click, excuse me, it's viewcontroller.m. I can actually double click on viewcontroller.m. And I can actually pull up this code here, copy and paste from here. Actually, I'm just going to take the whole method. Well, copy, copy this, and then paste this one into the broken code up here. <coughs> because the copying and pasting didn't quite work for me. Or I guess you could type the code in, but that's I'm just too lazy for that. See, now all the mistakes went away. So and this this file was not added to my project. I just opened it up. When you open it up, it opens up as an editor inside of Xcode. It doesn't add it to the project or anything like that. So now I can just go ahead and close it. What I did is I just went to the project folder of the downloaded solution, double-clicked on viewcontroller.m, cut and paste the code that was in that file, and stuck it in the... Uh, stuck it in my file so that I could get rid of the typos. So now if I run it, I should see the bottom window with the information about the randomness. So if I come up like this, and I'm going to click on this button here, and uh, I don't see it down here. Did I pull it? Oh, I pulled it out of the solution. <laughs> All right, so I pulled the NSLog <coughs> stuff out. Um, that wasn't too nice. Let's see, I'll put it back in, actually because I want to see the output. We had an NSLog statement somewhere up here. Here it is, random. Let's see how many times the computer has to test. If you got your code to work for the uh, from this tutorial, you don't have to do this. And then uh, there was one more thing I also pulled out here. Well, I'm just going to do an NS log of the turns too. So I'll do it right at the beginning here. Actually, I can just paste that other one, couldn't I? And then go here, I. This is going to be a button. Uh, this is going to be image style. Turn. Okay, so if you see what I just did, I added some NS logs to the beginning of this method. So every time I press the method, I'm going to see selected I, which is going to be the tag number that was selected, along with the uh, turn, or whose turn it is, or how many turns there's been, actually. So I'll make that turns. So now if I run it, I'll see uh, some more information showing up. I pulled the uh, NS logs out of the solution file. So. so you see on the bottom, I selected this one in the middle. And the one in the middle was selected 5, turn 0, because I started with 0. And now randomly pick 6, so it picked this one here. So I'm going to let the computer win, actually. I'm going to be stupid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one here. I don't think the computer is going to win. Turns now is 2, and a selected was 1. Okay, come, on, come, on, come on, computer. So see how this one here had a couple of randoms? So as we play through... See all the randoms that occurred this time? So as we play through, we see we have to, the computer has to think a little bit more because it tries to pick ones that are already taken. So now I'm hoping that, I'm hoping it's going to pull something over here, but let's see what happens. Oh, I, I don't want to win, so I'm going to put it here. <sighs> see, the computer's pretty stupid. So now I'm trying to make the computer win, actually. So I selected eight, so now I'm going to win. All right, wait a minute. Let me, let me try this again. So... I want to check check the logic, make sure the computer actually wins. 
So I'm not gonna pick the middle anymore. Ah, see that computer won. There, right, computer finally won. It's hard. The computer never wins. So it's, because the computer's not very intelligent. But you can see all the random selections it made. So, all right. So if you're going to add a few things to this to enhance its um, user interface, and don't worry, in a few minutes, I'll, the the, the tutorial is actually over with. In a few minutes, I'll come around and help people who are still having problems. And uh, you guys can continue to work on it while we set up the developer accounts. Uh, but um, if I were going to add some stuff to it, what I would do is go to the library and pull out some labels. And uh, let me put one here, here, label. Drag one here. And this one's going to say something like a turns. And then I'm going to put another label next to it that's going to hold the turns. So, what else do I need? Um, maybe uh, I don't know. Let's just do turns. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to put some more. I'm just gonna do turns. I'm not gonna do the whole assignment for you. So now I have a label here. So this is just gonna be a plain old label that's gonna tell me about my turns. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this one to the viewcontroller.h file, and I'm wiring it to something called uh, number of turns. I'll just do it that way. So I'm going to control drag it over and call this one num turns. And it's a UI label, so I'm going to press connect on it. Wow, we had a lot of noise today. <laughs> Drilling in the hallway. So number of turns. So because I made a property, I'm going to have to synthesize it. So I'm actually going to put a zero in here to start it out with. And what we're going to do is just change the text of this with the number that we have. So we're going to add the number to it. So if it's number of turns, then I'm going to go right here to synthesize. You mean number of like I, I, I just call it the number of turns. You can call it anything you want. So if I come up here <coughs> underneath the app implementation, I'm going to add the synthesize line at synthesize. And this is going to be turns. Up oh, number of turns. Number of turns. So I have a property now called number of turns that's a label that's on my desktop and it's going to hold my number of turns. So now then I can write to it. So when the user clicks on something, all the functionality comes here. So instead of the NS log holding the number of turns, I can do this. I can say, um, let's see, I'm going to just pick this one here, the turns here. I can take this string and put it on the label. So if I do that, I can just go simply, um, what was it called, number of terms, number of terms dot set text, set text, or no, um, actually, let's just do it this way, number of turns, set text, and then we'll just take this string here, and we'll stick it here. <coughs> And then uh, I need to add the opening and closing brackets here. And it's going to say the implicit conversion to int to n string is disallowed for automatic reference counting. Okay, whatever. So I could say string with create. I can make a string out of it and then put the string there if I wanted to. String with string. String with integer using a string. So, for example, if I said n string, oops. Let's just show you another way of doing this. In a string um, turns. Uh, so we already have turns. My turns is equal to. Uh, nah, you have to create a string with a string. I'm just going to leave it alone, actually. Um, Let's pull this out, actually. I have to give you the code, and I'll do it in a separate tutorial, actually. But you can just convert the string to it. Or you can actually set the property using this without doing set text. You can just go text. So if you did turns, let's just do it this way. Oops. Quotation mark might help. Uh, turns. Well, I still have to use the add directive here. Um, let's see. 
Let's just do it this way. It'll take the convert. Well, no, it's still going to complain about it. I still have to convert it. It's not allowed. Let's see what happens if I run it, actually. No, it's not going to allow it. We have to convert the integer to a string. So we have to do a string with integer. We have to create a string and then look up string with integer when you create the string. So you have to create a string, allocate it, initialize it with a string from an integer. This is the format for it. And I have a conversion for you. I have another tutorial for you that will show you that. So at this point, you can get your... Uh, actually, let me go back and fix that one. At this point, you can get your... Uh, main functionality down, look up string from integer to initialize a string with an integer, and you'll get that part down. Otherwise, if you just simply put a string here like, um, hello, then what will end up happening is when you run it and you click on a button, it'll change it to whatever it is, because it's, it's running that method square pressed. So. Let's click on square pressed here. So now, oh, it's only one character. <laughs> so you have to make the button a little bit bigger for it to work. So, But I don't totally want to do the assignment for you. So I will let you explore that. And what you're looking at is you need to create a string with initialize a string, allocate new, and then initialize it with an integer. So just look at string with integer. And uh, you will definitely have your answer there. So I'm going to end this tutorial and then come around and help you guys. So let me stop this one. Um, if you did not get this to work, don't worry about it. You can follow the other tutorial if you want as well. There's another one on bhacker.com that works as well. So the choice is yours. Um, you don't actually have to get either one of these to work. You can make your own tic-tac-toe game from scratch if you want to. And we're using your own logic if you want to. You don't have to use this one at all. But this one's a nice one if you're brand new and you're looking for a way of making this work. So. I am going to, actually I'm going to leave this one as is, and I'll post this one as is underneath the, uh, underneath the video link. So if you didn't get yours to work and you want this part added to it, it will, uh, I just changed it so it's not going to give you an error. So this one will, and make this a little bit bigger here. So this one should work now. Let me just make sure it works before I post it. <laughs> then uh, you'll have a starter, starter app. Yep, see it says hello. There you go. So you just change hello to convert. So I should probably change the typo on the other one too, but we'll just leave it alone. Okay. Let me stop this.